silver has already started to lead. And that's really important because when silver leads, it means that even within the precious metal sector, there is a risk on environment. Are you Into saying dollars, that we, wait a minute, are you saying amount, that we may only have one more full year to get in on such incredible prices in silver and gold? Um, I, I would say you have six months. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. You know, I just dropped my silver forecast for 2023 video, and if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that you check it out. The link's right up there. In it, my friend and colleague Silver Dragons and I both give our spot price forecasts for silver in 2023. Today, I'm going to ask a real market expert, Leo Gantz, for his take on the recent surge in the price of silver and gold, where he sees precious metals going in 2023. But right before I bring Lior on, let me open this recent purchase that I made from SD Bullion. It is the latest in the Silver Awakening series, The War Horse. Isn't that cool? Check that out. All the ones and zeros there. <laughs> and on the back, you can see the awakening. Their um, line here I love. You can't wake a person who is pretending to be asleep. And yes, I know that this um, you know, great seal on the back here, the uh, uh, Eye of Providence, really triggers a lot of people. But it is an interesting icon. It's on our dollar bill, uh, that eye. And I think what they're trying to convey here is, you know, there's something big going on. <laughs> we have to be awakened to its reality. The war horse, the Trojan horse that appears right here on top of a cell phone. Ooh, yeah. I think that is a, an amazing depiction here. And I, I really do love this you know, this uh, round, it is a five troy ounce round that I am super happy to include in my stack. But now, let's welcome Lior. Hi, Lior. Welcome back. Good Thank to see you. Thank you for having me. We are recording this interview on December 2nd, and we have seen some very interesting uh, price swings in the market this week. The stock market, gold and silver markets. Uh, the U.S. dollar, all seemingly reacting to a series of interesting events, right? The uh, FOMC meeting minutes were released. We heard Jerome Powell. And we just got a rather interesting November jobs report today. Could you help us unpack all these recent economic events, Leo? Yeah, I think uh, what we saw with uh, Jerome Powell is at the, Brooking, uh, the Brookings uh, Institute meeting, um, he was feeling more comfortable than at an FOMC meeting. It looks like the uh, host had some prior relationship with Jerome Powell. So just that respect level, um, and it allowed more open openness to answer questions. And then the questions came from a very sophisticated audience, not from like a journalist uh, trying to create an, a headline. In the previous FOMC meeting, uh, early November, he said that they would rather over tighten he literally said those words. I would rather over tighten and then cut rates later. He completely went the other way and said, we do not want to over tighten. I think that's what the market really liked. And that's what uh, drove um, the the rally during the uh, Brookings Institute's um, live feed. There will be inflation with us. Um, and it will not get solved even if the Fed... Um, raises interest rates. The only thing that they can do by raising interest rates is create more what Powell called human costs and create a severe recession. And they don't want to do it. Did we just see a uh -huh. soft pivot by the Fed, Lior? Um, not yet. Not yet. Let, let's wait until the Fed uh, really comes in after the CPI numbers um, in December and see what they say. I think that they will they will most likely come with a 50 basis point rate hike. But what we really want is uh, is to understand as a society and as investors that the Fed cares way more about jobs now than the CPI. To the Fed, 
the CPI has been um, managed and stabilized. It's high, but it's now stable. The problem to them is creating that balance in the jobs market. Google will lay off employees. Uh, companies will um, freeze R&D projects. All of this is coming to big tech. And I think that that's where uh, in the next six to eight months, we reach the June meeting, the June 2023 meeting, where we actually see that pivot. And when I mean pivot, I think they will stop raising interest rates in June and say we are now in a in a buy in, in a wait and see period. To me, in this in the next six to eight months, this will be the worst part of the recession reset that we that we are having. Um, and I think that towards June, we will see the Fed saying, "Okay, th- we've reached our terminal rate, and we are pausing." If the market gets this indication from the Fed that the terminal rate is 475 to 5. If in the next six to eight months we do see these layoffs, continue to see slowing in the housing market um, to where people ha- uh, you know, finally get to a point where they make a, a, a sane decision about how much to pay for four walls. Um, and, and we continue to see uh, far less ex- you know, exuberance in exotic uh, assets like JPEGs of monkeys, etc. And as you can see, all of this deflate back to reality, back to an environment where we can say, okay, I don't know what I was thinking for the last two years, but I'm here now. When does that change though? Yes. The mindset's going to change so, soon. The mindset has changed two <laughs> days ago. What he basically told you two days ago is, look, I am going to stop soon. And when I stop, inflation doesn't stop. So he basically told you, you need to start going back to risk on. Now you need to hedge. So inflation, I'm sorry, so gold and silver are um, incredible. I think gold can actually go up by about 20%. So from 1800, uh, 20% gets you above the 2100. It doesn't have to happen on December 31st. So during the year, I think we have a great situation of hitting a new all-time high in gold. One of the reasons uh, that I tell you that uh, this can happen during the year is because, uh, as you can see right now, bond bond yields are uh, going back down. And that's really critical because what that tells you is that uh, with inflationary expectations still very high, the bond market is telling you we believe in the soft landing narrative. So um, that's really interesting. It means a lot to risk assets. And I think that if we are going back to a risk asset environment, gold's gonna be one key asset to um, to really own in your portfolio because you're going into a zero growth environment. You're going into a, a stagflationary year. Okay, so that's step one. Silver has already started to lead. And that's really important because when silver leads, it means that even within the precious metal sector, there is a risk on environment. Um, and I think that that's critical. To me, silver during this year can go up by about between 15 and 25. So it can underperform or overperform gold, but it will definitely um, have a positive year. It, it could reach as high as the high 20s, if not try to pierce its very, very hard resistance at uh, 29 and a half. Now, if it does that, it's going to 36 and we have a legendary year. Um, but that's not my base case. My base case is that the dollar um, uh, starts to fall in 2023. But to me, the year that the dollar really, uh, um, <laughs> yes, uh, it, it, it will tank during 2024, in my opinion, because that's when the recovery will be really underway, and the the world is too weighted. Are, are you into saying dollars. that we wait a minute, are you amount? saying that we may only have one more full year to get in on such incredible prices in silver and gold? Um, I I would say you have six months. By the June, by the June pause, if if we have a pause in June, you will 
effectively have a generational bottom in gold and silver. That will probably that will be uh, like Powell saying, "Look, it's over. It's over. We have finished. We've done what we can. There is inflation in the system. Now start to build a new economy. Start to recover this economy. But keep in mind, there is inflation in, in our system." So I put together a very exclusive report for your viewers if uh, about the dollar being a fake haven, about uh, the CPI being deceiving and a fake out. I don't think CPI is, is a peak yet. And you can go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash Yankee and download this report. And I think that uh, it's going to show you exactly our insights. Protecting your wealth is going to be uh, the key mindset, I believe, over the next year, year and a half. Wealthresearchgroup.com slash Yankee. And I really do appreciate you taking the time to talk with me.